Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If somebody were to say to me, what do you think the biggest problem is in the church? I have always said and will continue to say, we just need to grow up. <laughs> we just need to grow up. You don't have to get mad every time you don't get your way. Tonight I want to talk to you about the importance of the condition of your heart. What is the condition of your heart? And I'm not talking about your physical heart. I'm talking about the heart of man, the deepest part of our being, what God calls our heart. Are you content? What's going on in there? <laughs> You know, God calls us to have a perfect heart. And the word perfect can be very frightening to us, but I can tell you this, that I don't believe as long as we're in a human body we will ever have perfect behavior, but I do believe that we can have a perfect heart. Amen. You're not sure, but that's okay. <laughs> See? And it happens through growing through growing. None of us have arrived, but we can grow. And I love believers, and I don't believe that the moment that we're born again, then God no longer has any interest in doing anything with us. I was a miserable believer for a lot of years in my life. Amen? And I'm glad that God cares about those of us that are saved, and he sends people to work with us to help us have the life that Jesus died to give us. I want you to have the life that Jesus died in order for you to have. Paul said, I'm determined to take hold of those things for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. Jesus died to take hold of us for a purpose, and we have to have the attitude, I'm going to take hold of that thing for which he has taken hold of me. I'm going to grow. Make the devil mad. Shout out, I'm going to grow. I love it. Now, in Philippians 3, uh, 12, Paul said, not that I have attained this ideal. I've not arrived. Is there anybody here that's arrived? Anybody want to give arrival lessons? I've not arrived. I make mistakes. But I'm actually at the point where I'm really happy when God convicts me of wrongdoing in my life. I mean, I remember the day when I would get convicted of doing something wrong and it would always get me down. Oh God, how can anybody have that much wrong with them? <laughs> Come on, don't get, don't get like that. When God shows you that, something, that you did something wrong, you should rejoice. Thank, thank God he doesn't leave us alone in our messes. The worst thing that could happen to any one of us is God would leave us alone. And chastisement is a sign of God's love. When God chastises us or when the Holy Spirit convicts us of wrongdoing, whether it's you shouldn't have said that, don't think like that, don't act like that, don't be selfish, don't be stingy, don't be bitter, don't be jealous. Whenever God convicts us of sin, we need to say, thank you, God, for loving me enough to stay after me until I get this right. Amen. Paul said, I've not attained this ideal, nor have I already been made perfect. But I press on to lay hold of and to grasp and to make my own that for which Christ Jesus the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. Ephesians 4.15 says that we are to grow up in every way and in all things into the truth. Let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up. <laughs> Let us grow up in every way and in all things into him who is the head, Christ the Messiah. This 
is the truth. The Word of God is the truth. We're going to talk a little bit in the morning about some of the nonsense floating around the earth today about, well, there is no, there's no definite truth, you know, there's, you know, relative truth, but no real truth. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I mean, truth just can't be a whole bunch of things depending on what everybody thinks it is. The very nature of truth means only one thing can be true. <laughs> Amen? And I mean, who are we going to believe if we don't want to believe God? I mean, is there really anything better that you'd want to base your life on? Well, yeah. You better be sure. No. Absolutely not. 1 Peter 2. I'm going to begin in verse 1. I'm going to tell you, I got a boatload of scriptures up here. So be done with every trace of wickedness. Not even a little teeny, teeny, tiny little bit. Be done with every trace of wickedness, depravity, malignity, and all deceit and insincerity, pretense, hypocrisy, and grudges, envy, jealousy. I'm telling you, jealousy gets in me once in a while. I got to, God, I'm not going to put up with this. I refuse to be jealous. I'm not going to want what somebody else has got. You've given me too much to be thankful. You got to fight the devil. You got to fight the devil. You, well, I wish I didn't feel like this. <laughs> the kingdom of God has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. <laughs> Amen. And get rid of all slander and evil speaking of every kind. Like newborn babies, you should crave, thirst for, earnestly desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk that by it you may be nurtured and grow unto completed salvation. I remember when the Lord told me one time, it's time for your mouth to be saved. Completed salvation has to reach your mouth, your mind, the way you dress, what you do with your money, who you hang out with, what you talk about, what you spend your money on, what kind of entertainment you have. Amen? Come on. Yeah, he said, you're saved, but you don't sound saved. Your mouth needs to get saved. Could anybody else use a little salvation there? Oh, I got all kinds of stuff on the resource table for that. Man. Woo. I got books. I got DVDs. I got CDs. <laughs> Grow. Verse 3. Since you've already tasted the goodness and the kindness of God. I kind of wish that verse 3 was first because I think that's really the intent here. What if we read it like this? Since you've already tasted the goodness and the kindness of God, now be done with every trace of wickedness, depravity, malignity, all deceit, insincerity, jealousy of every kind. And like newborn babes, crave the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk, which is the Word of God. How can we see the goodness of God and what He's done for us and not want to be better? I want to be better because I love Jesus. I don't have to try to be better every day so I'll go to heaven. My salvation is based on my faith. But if you have real faith, if faith is real, if we're truly born again, if God really lives in us, then we absolutely cannot stay the same. It is not possible to be born again and never change. It is just not possible. Are you behaving any better than you were last year? Of course. 
Last time I was here was 2012. Are you behaving any better since the last time that I was here? <laughs> We're growing. Oh my gosh, my husband could come up here and tell you how much I've grown. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you what, in 48 years, he's been married to 20 different women. I just keep changing. There's no telling who he'll be married to next year. Joyce Meyer version number 42. I mean, is there anybody else in here, honestly, you can just say that you are just a totally different person than you used to be? Well, now, folks, look around you. We're not all crazy and we're not all liars, so there must be something in this wonderful word that is changing people. You know, people say to me, you've changed my life. Well, it's the word that's changed your life. We love you. Well, you know, really what you love is the word. I mean, that, that's really it. I'm just a word girl. I just believe the word of God, and I love to share the word of God. And I'll tell you what, if we believe the word, and we eat the word, and we love the word, and we live in the word, we cling to the word, things are going to change in our lives. I attended church for many years without growing spiritually. Going and sitting, you can sit in a church pew until your cute little bottom is totally flat <laughs> and has calluses on it from you sitting there. And it will not change you one bit unless you really are hearing something. Don't just go sit somewhere out of some kind of obligation. Get somewhere where they're alive and on fire with the Word of God, where the truth is being spoken and love the Word. Don't go out of obligation. Go because you can't stand not to be there. Well, if I leave, Granny's going to get mad. I know, Granny got mad at me too, but... <laughs> and it does not matter to me what denomination you go to. I don't care because they're not going to be in heaven anyway. But the point is, is we got to be somewhere that is alive and on fire with the glory of God, where the Word is being preached in a way that is challenging us and changing our lives. If you can go and sleep through church every Sunday, you better go somewhere else. Amen. <laughs> because you go to sleep in my place, we're going to come and wake you up. Yeah, Jesus. All right, now, one of my very favorite places in Scripture is coming up right now. Hebrews 5.12 For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's Word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. Just like babies, they start out on milk, and the goal is to get them on over to meat and vegetables. Amen? Amen? Eventually, the baby bottle and the diapers and the pacifier has to go. For everyone who continues to feed on milk, which is really talking about the milk of the Word and the meat of the Word, it's like there's messages and then there's messages. Amen? Amen? I mean, like, I'm getting ready to teach some messages coming up next year on the fire of God. Mm. John said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Well, we don't hear much about that because the crowd gets smaller every week if you try to teach on the fire of God. And so there's, it's great to encourage people and to edify people and to 
tell them how much God loves them and how sweet they are and how anointed they are and all the good things that God's going to do in their life. We need that. But we need more than that. <laughs> we have to have more than that. And Paul said he couldn't, he could not give many of them the meat of the word. He had to keep giving them milk. Now watch this. This is why, and I, this is why I love this scripture so much. Everyone, verse 13, everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. In other words, they didn't know who they were in Christ. They were insecure. They weren't getting their worth and value out of being the righteousness of God in Christ. And so every time a strong word would come that confronted their behavior, that made them more and more insecure. So Paul had to just keep trying to get them to feel good about themselves. I'll tell you what. Anytime I want to have a happy crowd, all I got to do is teach on who you are in Christ. And I do that on a regular basis because people need it. We need to know who we are in Christ. That's the beginning and the foundation of so many things. But if you're having a healthy diet of the word, if you're under a teacher or under a pastor who's giving you a healthy diet of the word of God, they're not just going to teach you about those things. They're going to also tell you Straighten up, get yourself off your mind, get busy being a blessing to other people, get ready for the second return of Christ. Get, you know. And we need that. We need that. <laughs> if somebody were to say to me, what do you think the biggest problem is in the church? I have always said and will continue to say, we just need to grow up. <laughs> we just need to grow up. You don't have to get mad every time you don't get your way. You don't got to get all down on God because you prayed for something and it didn't happen. Somebody else got what you wanted. God didn't pick you for the choir. God didn't pick you for the worship leader. No, no, I'm mad because God didn't pick me and I'm leaving this church because they didn't pick me. <laughs> well, you old silly thing, you, you just take your problems and go to another church and you'll leave that one too. Yeah. Amen? Oh, well. How many of you agree that we, it's time to just get over our sweet little selves? And... Yeah. Well, you <laughs> For even though by this time you should be teaching others. <laughs> How many times are we going to have to hear the same thing? And it's, I mean, you know, we all need to hear the same stuff over and over and over to be reminded, but I think God's just trying to say it's time to get on with it. Time to, time to get on with it. Verse 14, but solid food is for full-grown men whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice. Then chapter 6, verse 1 says, then let us go on <laughs> and get past this elementary stage in teaching. Let's go on to more advanced teaching. I would love it when I sit down to do a teaching on giving if people would clap and cheer and underline in their Bibles and... Amen. Instead of acting like you're trying to get in their pocket, you know, it's like, I didn't write the book. He's the one that said all the stuff about it, not me. Amen. I tell you, it's hard sometimes on teachers and preachers when they try to bring something that people don't want to hear, you know? So I don't care what I preach this weekend, I want you to smile. All right. If we always want to grow, God can show himself strong in us. And we have now conquered two points of my seven-point message. Yeah. Number three, a person with a perfect heart is fully committed. 
Everybody say all. all. Oh, that's such a small word with such a big meaning. All. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your mind. All. And you shall give thanks in all things, at all times. <laughs> mm. All. Romans 12, 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and I beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. It kind of goes like this. Okay, God, here I am. I'm going out in the world today, and I offer myself to you as your vessel. I give you my eyes. I give you my ears. So if I give him my ears, then that means I'm not going to sit at the lunch table and listen to and laugh at dirty jokes. Let's kind of get it practical so we know what it means. I give you my mouth, so that means I'm not going to gossip at work with everybody else. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about little inconveniences. <laughs> yeah, don't get quiet on me. I'm... See, now you're thinking, oh, my gosh, now, now something's going to have to change. <laughs> you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, God's own purchase, special people. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, now, I love this, these scriptures. This is Genesis 11, 31, and 32. Terah took Abram, his son Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, and his son Abram's wife, and they went forth together to go from Ur of the Chaldees into the land of Canaan, which was the promised land. But, everybody say but. <laughs> but when they came to Haran, they settled there. That scripture amazes me. I believe that God actually called Terah before he called Abraham. He called him out to go to Canaan, just like he did Abraham, but Terah settled before he got where he was going. Now listen, listen to this next verse. Listen to this. And Terah, and this is the only thing the Bible says about Terah after that. And Terah lived 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Period. End of Terah. <laughs> when you settle halfway between where you were and where God wants you to be, come on, he called us out to bring us in. He called us out of bondage to bring us into the full promises of God. He called us out to bring us in. And I tell you what, I've made my mind up when I'm gone, the people left behind better have more to say about me than Joyce lived 95 years and she died. <laughs> I don't want that to be all that's left. And Joyce lived 95 years and she died. No. And Joyce lived and she wrote 150 books and we're still reading them today. And we all should want to have that kind of testimony. Don't just float through here and not leave a mark and nobody care when you're gone and half the people you know be glad when you're gone. Go through here, leave a mark, make the devil mad, be all that God wants you to be and say, I will not settle. I am not going to settle. Well, keep in mind that the condition of your heart is important. Having a perfect heart does not mean that our behavior is perfect. A good characteristic of a perfect heart is a desire to grow spiritually. When you do that, you can expect God to really show himself strong in you. And just to help you continue to grow spiritually,
eh, lo hacía escondida de todo, pero yo con 13 años lo pillé. También escuchaba cómo a veces él le pegaba. Entonces, eh, si bien mi mamá siempre trató de mantener la familia como en secreto, esas cosas. Que no, que era fea, que no, que nadie me pescaba. Que no había esperanza en mí. Que mis manos eran feas, mi cara. Me miraba al espejo y lloraba. Dos veces traté de ahorcarme. Well, at Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, we are honored to work alongside Teen Challenge to help people break the chains of addiction and to see all that God has created them to be. Patricia and Norbert, would you begin by telling us about the need for a home like this here in Chile? Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, the situation with uh, the women growing up in atmospheres where men abuse them. And through that abuse, women are turning to drugs like never before. The men beat them up, they turn them into slaves, they make them do the drug runs. And so they are afraid to, st to step out. They are afraid to go back to their families. It's a nine to 12 month program. We have a curriculum that gives them step by step discipleship in which they can grow in Christ. Once they're mature enough, they are reunited with their children. And when they live that dream of being free from drugs and being free from those things that cause them to turn to drugs, then they can be the mother that they need to be. Pamina, you are such an important part of all of these women's stories because of the way that you play a huge role in their healing. What are some of the particular troubles that women are dealing with? La necesidad de amor, del abrazo familiar, del abrazo de alguien que te ama, lo que buscan, lo que necesitan, lo que transforma porque mis manos eh, son instrumentos de Dios. Y esta es mi familia, ellas son mis hijas. Cuando supe que Él me perdonó, a pesar de que le hacía daño también a la gente al vender droga, eso me, me sentí súper porque alguien me amaba así como yo era. You said before that you couldn't even stand to look in a mirror because of how ugly you felt. What do you see now? When I'm working, a lot of people come to me and say, oh, your smile, you have something special. A ver qué it's special. And one time I stopped and I looked at the mirror, but I looked at my eyes. And he said, I did this. And it was my face. What an amazing privilege to see the way that these women are blooming, the way that the beauty that God has put in them is now coming out so that they can see it. And when you help a woman, it flows over into her children, into her families, and it changes so many lives. That is what Project Girl is all about, sharing the beauty and you can do that with us right here in Chile as we've been talking about and in many, many places all over the world. of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt.
Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.